Live from our news up here at Adesawe Kanda in Accra, this is News 360. I am Aisha Yakubu. And my name is Parkus Yasari. Coming up in the next 60 minutes. News 360 Headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint, GT Bank, and Piccadilly Biscuits. Energy Minister John Peter Mewu dismisses suggestions that government failed in conducting due diligence in PDS concession agreements. Also, Parliament approved 6.3 billion CDs requested by Finance Minister in mid-year budget review. Still ahead in the bulletin, an Accra High Court puts Boko Central MP Mahama Yariga's case on hold, awaiting determination of legitimacy of Martin Amidu, a special prosecutor by the Supreme Court. And on the international front, a second person has died of Ebola on Democratic Republic of Congo's border with Rwanda. We've got details of all these stories, plus many more coming up in the next 60 minutes. Remember, we're streaming live on Facebook. You can also join us on any of our social media pages on Facebook and on Twitter. Aisha? We start off with Energy Minister John Peter Mill, who has dismissed assertions that government failed in conducting due diligence in the PDS concession agreement. Speaking to TV3 in an exclusive interview, the sector minister rubbished calls for him to resign, adding that government should rather be commended for safeguarding a national asset. The sector minister, John Peter Amewu, justified justify the decision by government to suspend the deal. The decision to suspend the, uh, the concession agreement between uh, ECG and the PDS is as a result of some um, uh, material evidence that seems to conclude that uh, the payment security, which ought to have come from uh, PDS, uh, was not well executed and therefore being considered as uh, fraudulently uh, done. And on that basis, um, government think it's important to quickly uh, hold on the assets of Ghanaians because don't forget this is a major asset that we have transferred. And if such a fraudulent uh, activities have been uh, detected, uh, its proper government takes on action. Some Ghanaians, including the opposition, have questioned the manner in which PDS was awarded the contract, imputing lack of due diligence. Uh, don't forget there are condition subsequent and condition precedent to this contract. And so the due diligence process is an ongoing process. And that is where we have been able to establish uh, this element of uh, fraud of course, which is yet to be validated. Uh, but while we wait for the, uh, uh, the validation process, government have taken this action to secure the assets. On what the ramifications of such an action could be, the minister outlined three scenarios. The letter uh, which is coming from the court uh, claiming that the uh, payment security is fraudulently uh, done and that they have nothing to do to do with it and the officer responsible for that had already been suspended and therefore they are taking the issue seriously if that decisions have been concluded then of course uh, that automatically will lead to a termination of uh, the concession that is number one uh, uh, number two is that if government take a decision to terminate without validation there may be some consequences and that is why government do not take that second option. Now, the third option is uh, if uh, it has been found out that, of course, the uh, payment guarantee of the security have been well executed and our court, which is a executing company, uh, had accepted responsibility for it and there have been some element of consideration, then, of course, the process will, will continue. 
Consequently, the Energy Commission has appointed the ECG as interim operator to take charge of management and operations of electricity sale. The demand guarantees submitted by PDS to ECG have been disavowed by the issuer and declared null and void. The consequent impairment of the lease and assignment agreement between ECG and PDS, the decision by ECG to suspend the provisions of rights and obligations defined under the LAA pending determination of all consequential matters arising out of the above. As a result, PDS is to facilitate and provide ECG with the needed access to all billing systems, metering operations, payment accounts involved in the operation of the retail sales license. Key officers of both PDS and ECG have been invited to a meeting at the Energy Commission tomorrow at 10 a.m. to resolve any outstanding issues relating to the appointment of ECG as interim operator. Meanwhile, the minority leader has called for a public inquiry in the suspended ECG PDS deal. Harun Idrisu insists that development requires further probe. Ghana stood to benefit from about $500 million Millennium Challenge Account Fund, but on condition that it reformed its energy sector by bringing on private participation in its management by way of a concessionaire agreement. Government says upon intelligence it has stumbled on there are anomalies in the deal by the minority insist there's more to it. We are not out of the energy sector woes yet. Just some few minutes and hours ago, government have issued a statement on ECG PDS concessionaire. We warned you, we told you so. This parliament has been indicted that we do not do a diligent work. We are now being told by government officials that some documents and some information was obtained misleadingly. We demand a parliamentary inquiry into the transaction of that concessionaire under the MIDA agreement. Ranking member of the Energy Committee, Adams Mutawakilu, says government ignored the minority's caution to relook at the contract. The issue of this insurance was raised by the minority somewhere April, that they had not provided insurance and what they provided later was paper insurance or paper guarantee, not backed by liquidity or finances. This government is a lazy government, not willing to work for the interests of this country. And a cancellation of the deal could mean some dire consequences. This government itself must hold ourselves if we didn't conduct ourselves well. We should accept responsibility. When documents come here, we will not thoroughly scrutinize it. We just say approve, approve, approve because we have numbers. Look at the embarrassment is causing the economy. Just this agreement. We demand that. In related developments, the Public Utilities Workers Union pool and the Industrial and Commercial Workers Union ICU also wants government to prosecute officials who did not do due diligence before allowing PDS to take over ECG. The Public Utilities Workers Union pool expressed concern over the issues regarding the concession agreement. Its General Secretary Michael Eduma Tanyantechi blamed the Millennium Development Authority, MIDA, for the breaches in the contract. They always say that a credible off ticker and uh, these developments coming up doesn't go to confirm whether they've really met the criteria of a, a credible off ticker that they themselves have been touting. So I think that MIDA must come and explain a lot to Ghana and Ghanaians. The General Secretary of the Industrial and Commercial Workers Union, ICU, Solomon Kote, called for the prosecution of officials who violated the agreement. Consequences on such investigation will definitely get some people to be tagged with. And therefore, those who entered into those agreements, what they knew, what they didn't know at the time before signing, they will also come up and give their version on the matter. And like we keep saying in Ghana, it will allow the laws to work. Okay, penalties that are associated with these things should be applied to get out the sanctions to the fullest. The Public Utilities Workers Union repeated its position that ECG is capable of power distribution. The development of the nation cannot really be attained without secured energy supply. So if we prioritize energy, 
we should be able to find money as a nation and do all the reform that is needed to enable the all the institutions within the energy sector operate efficiently. The ICU, which agreed on the operation capacity of ECG, warned against power interruptions due to the ongoing matter. In these few days ahead of us, we expect the government to be more proactive in coming out and letting Ghanaians know that these are the issues. Power is so essential, and anything to toy with it and to bring people's job and people's life into some kind of great inconvenience, which is highly avoidable, they should be able to do that to Ghanaians. And still on the PDS suspension, former Deputy Power Minister John Jinapo is demanding that the concessionaire be compelled to account for monies that it has collected from the electricity consumers. He also called for the abrogation of the contract. John Jinapo in an article in April questioned the processes leading to the selection of power distribution company PDS. He alleged under the guise of promoting local content, the Ekofo Adwe led government altered the original agreement to pave way for the contract to be given to a consortium made of friends, cronies and party apparatchiks, contrary to the original goals and objectives of the entire program which was commenced during the previous NDC administration. Reacting to the suspension of the PDS deal, the former deputy power minister said it is fraudulent and inimical to the state and must be totally abrogated. This is the time to terminate that agreement and hand over the entire asset back to ECG. Constitute a proper board, a competent non-political board. I'm also demanding that immediately PDS must publish the record. Tariffs were increased from the 1st of July this year. It's been 30 days now. They haven't even published the record. So when you are cheated, when you are shortchanged as far as your tariffs are concerned, you can't even determine that. He downplayed the argument that government must take credit for the detection of the alleged fraud in the deal. How can government take credit for that? You had an original agreement that had a condition precedent, which means that before PDS takes over, they must satisfy all those guarantees. The condition precedent are 45. Government waived 16 of them, including this very one. So it is the fault of government. Even though government is not expecting any judgment debt, John Jinapo says there are some indications the matter would be legally pursued. I'm told the Americans are threatening. I'm told MCC is unhappy with what is happening. I'm told that the Americans are determined to slap some penal measures on Ghana because it is due to the negligence of government that has led to this challenge. He urged Ghanaians to mount pressure on government to put in place the right measures in the energy sector. Meanwhile, government has frozen the accounts of PDS. Moving away from that, Parliament has approved the 6.3 billion CDs the Finance Minister is requesting in its mid-year review for its fiscal policy. After fierce debates between the majority and minority leaders, the House, by a majority decision, approved the budget. Here's a report by Komla Kluche. You said Esla was new science tax. Mr. Speaker, Esla, new science. So today, new science tax is being adjusted upward. What we are worried about is its consequence and cost for an already emasculated private sector which is struggling. What it means is that members themselves do not even understand the import of the mid year review. You are supposed to relate to the target set and in the course of the implementation where we are as a nation. That is it. The fierce and intense defense and dispute over the figures and proposals the finance minister presented to the House on Monday. There were disagreements and name calling. Flagship program of this government, I don't intend to go. One appears successful, three senior high school, with all these challenges. One district, one factory. The minister is quoted here that there is 700 million US dollars. From where? From where? With Exim Bank, state it. Uh, the Minister for Trade and Industry came here and said 400 million dollars. Now, something like that, who should we believe? In the external sector, occasioned the upscaling of the gross international reserves to 9.9 .9 billion, equivalent to 5.1 months of import cover. 
Mr. Speaker, that is unprecedented. That is unprecedented. And anybody should throw a challenge. What we have witnessed under the NPP, that is 9.9 .9 billion dollars of import cap of international, gross international reserves is not known to this country. Mr. Speaker, the past 35, 40 years, we have not seen this before. 6.3 billion CDs approved by the House, a chunk of it will be pushed into the energy sector as the finance minister laments its bleeding. Away from Parliament now, the Accra High Court hearing the trial of Boko Central MP Mama Yariga has put the case on hold. This is to await the determination of the legitimacy of Martin Amidi to hold the office of Special Prosecutor by the Supreme Court. Here's a report by Selam Aminya. The High Court, presided by Justice Ifya Sewa Asaribuchi, stayed proceedings after lawyers for the NP argue that the case cannot proceed due to a pending appeal they have filed challenging an earlier ruling of the court. The Boku Central MP has been charged with using his public office for private gain by the Special Prosecutor Martin Amidu. His lawyers earlier prayed the court to dismiss the case against him as they questioned the eligibility of Martin Amidu as special prosecutor. That was, however, dismissed by the court, insisting that the pending suit questioning Martin Amidu's eligibility at the Supreme Court does not bar him from filing charges. Lawyer for the Boku Central MP, Eduji Tamaklo, told the court they are seeking to overturn its ruling at the Court of Appeal. He further stated that another case against the eligibility of the special prosecutor is pending. The special prosecutor's office, represented by Michael Bafey, opposed the application, arguing that no harm would be done Mahama Yarga if the trial progresses. He argued that both the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court can make orders truncating the trial of the NP if there is merit in the case. But the court, presided by Justice Bochi, ruled that the trial will stand adjourned, awaiting the decision of the APS court. She defended the decision, adding that it will be ridiculous if it progresses further, only for it to be brought to an abrupt end by the decision of the Supreme Court. The Office of the Special Prosecutor has charged the NP and six others, including the current MCE for Boku, Hajia Ninshema, for engaging in procurement breaches. They are facing seven counts of conspiracy, abetment, contravention of the procedure for request for quotation, using public office for profit, and transfer of foreign exchange from Ghana through an unauthorized dealer. This was after they allegedly acted together to import an ambulance without following due procurement process as stipulated by the law. Now, the National Association of Graduate Teachers has given government 20 working days to pay all outstanding salary arrears and also stop deductions of their salary in Tugani Education Service Insurance Policy or risk withdrawal of services. President of the association, Angel Kabonu, who addressed a news conference in Accra, said that delay and deductions have created discomfort on the teachers' front. According to the association, the issue on salaries began with a three-month payment policy in 2013. Under the policy, teachers who worked for three years were only paid three months and the rest of the months validated before payment. However, government promised to pay the arrears but has not. Though some teachers were paid in April, majority of them still have the arrears outstanding. Many teachers' old salary arrears were hopeful that they were going to be paid at the end of March per the promise made by His Excellency Nana Akufuado, the President of the Republic, while acknowledging that some payments were made in April 2019, most teachers, old areas, are still unpaid. We are anxious to know when they will receive their salary arrears. He requested the Ghana Education Management to address their grievances on teachers' promotion and deduction of their salary into the GES Insurance Fund. We call on the GES to immediately stop the illegal deductions and refund all monies deducted to their owners by the end of August 2019. If the GES does not heed to this advice, 
teachers will withdraw their services from the 1st of September 2019. Another concern to Nagrat is the appointment of people the association regards as political activists, as communicators for the Ghana Education Service. The appointment of political activists to run the Ghana Education Service cannot be accepted. Just yesterday, I heard that circuit supervisors are now going to be changed to school inspected, inspector officers. We are not too sure whether teachers will be appointed as those school inspectors, but we hope that they will not send any non-teacher into the schools, because if they do, we will not cooperate with them. The association has asked the Ministries of Finance and Education to resolve their grievances before against 31. A reminder, you're still watching News 360 live from our news hub here at Adesawa in Kandakra. We're streaming live on Facebook. You can also join us with your views, comments and suggestions on any of our top stories this hour. We're very active on social media. Our handle is TV3GH on Facebook and on Twitter. Let's know what you think. Now, today on our MTN video report, our citizen journalist Nana Bafo Nina highlights on the deplorable state of a bridge in Kuforidria. This is a broken bridge at Koforidia, Nurses Hostel Junction. It is broken and very dangerous for pedestrians and commuters who ply this road. A broken bridge and nobody cares. This is Ghana for you. Nanenina from Koforidia, Nurses Hostel. Right, and just like Naya, uh, the number four, you know, you can also send your video report via WhatsApp on 055-1433044. That's 055-1433044. Aisha? You're watching News 360. Remember, we're also live on DSTV Channel 279. After the break, there's more news. Please stay with us. All right, welcome back to News 360 live from my news hub here at the Sawin Kandakra. Let's do some business stories now. And the Chief Executive uh, Officer's Advisory Group on the SDGs has unveiled the Delivery Fund and the Green Fund geared towards achieving its targeted goals. The Delivery Fund is expected to generate some 500 million CDs a year, while the Green Fund will garner some 1 billion CDs within five years. The SDG Delivery Fund is expected to generate 500 million CDs a year. It has been developed to harness and coordinate social responsibility, sustainable activities by the private sector into a collective for good. The 1 billion CD five year targeted green fund is to fund projects which contribute to environmental sustainability and green mortgages to support the real estate sector. We succeeded in producing an SDGs baseline report, a report that is so important for us for tracking progress on the goals over time. The Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Balmia, said government will continue to work with the private sector to ensure all set targets are achieved. His Excellency the President has never lost an opportunity to express his strong conviction about these sustainable development goals and what our country, the continent and the world at large stands to benefit from their successful implementation. As His Excellency the President has often said, the SDGs are not an add-on to what we should be doing as a country. The 17 goals are exactly what we must focus on to succeed in transforming this country to be able to bring full prosperity and a life of dignity to our people. The meeting with the CEOs is consistent with the president's strong desire to strengthen the partnership with the private sector in the implementation of the SDGs through regular engagements and dialogues. In other news, Shell, in collaboration with Ya Itri, have opened Shell Select. It is a made-in-shell branded convenience store in Accra. 
Shell Select provides a consumer-focused retail convenience store experience to customers featuring a broad range of high-quality, locally-inspired, freshly prepared food and beverage offerings, all served in a relaxing and friendly environment. It also allows one's own pace without being slowed or rushed. Managing Director of Vivo Energy, Ben Hassan Watara, said the company is excited to offer a new and unique experience for its customers. The new Shell Select format is designed to serve various customers' requests and to address their changing shopping needs. Customer who wants to take a quick break, have a liquid boost with a soft drink or water, grab something to eat on the go, or do some top-up shopping are encouraged to turn to our new Shell Select store. General Manager of Ya Itris, Alex Afo, highlighted the various services. Anytime you are traveling and you feel like grabbing something like um, waffle, um, pancake, and shawarma, we also have noodles and rice. We have ice cake and waffle, and uh, we also have the fula in shell, some of the shell shops, which is Usu Trade Fair, Tema and now the new Odoko branch. You are always welcome. Shell is an international energy company committed to meet the world's growing needs for more and cleaner energy solutions in ways that are economically, environmentally, and socially responsible. Right, so away from petroleum, let's take a quick trip uh, to the telecoms industry where operator Etel Tigo has unveiled its new bundle package, the Fuse Bundle. The product is to enable existing and new prepaid subscribers call all networks and browse the internet at affordable prices, uh, at affordable price points with no expiry. Fuse Bundle has been designed based on extensive research and feedback from subscribers who highlighted the need for talk time and data to browse the internet in a single package. The bundle offers customers a choice of three price options starting at 40 minutes to call all networks and 40 megabytes for two CDs. The product has been tailored to meet the voice and data needs of subscribers. Many times what happens is if let us say I buy a one CD product or a two CD product or whatever be it. I am informed that it expires in maybe two days, maybe five days, whatever it is. And that was coming out as a very, very big pain point for the customers. So the customer needs to drive, to use minutes calls. The customer needs to make calls to all networks. The customer needs to use data as well as a customer need or a pain point that it should not expire have all come together in making this product. Marketing Operating Director of Airtel Tigo, Pios to Four, explained the mechanics and encouraged existing and potential subscribers to take advantage of the new product. When you purchase a Fuse Bundle, you have a voice minutes plus data allocation and both doesn't expire. So the allocations today, you have price points of two cities, five cities and ten Ghana cities. For the price point of two Ghana cities, you get 40 minutes you, had, you get 40 MB of data. For 5 Ghana cities, you get 100 minutes and 100 MB of data. For 10 Ghana cities, you get 250 minutes plus 250 MB of data. And when you purchase this data bundle, it doesn't expire. That is what we are entreating and encouraging all customers, our existing and new customers, to go out there and purchase Fuse. The magic number is star 567 hash. That is all you need to remember. Etel Tigo is a dynamic and innovative brand which provides a wide range of telecommunication services, including mobile voice, data, mobile financial services, and business connectivity solutions. Right, so that'll be all for the business news segment here on News 360. For more business news stories, do log on to our website www.3news.com. Thank you, Pakisi, for business. Now, the maiden edition of the Law Challenge Ghana has been launched. The Educational Quiz Platform Initiative is intended to strengthen the connections between the law, legal education, business community, and society. The Law Challenge Ghana Initiative, endorsed by the Tertiary Education Unit of the Ministry of Education, to commence in September, is aimed at generating competitive spirit among the law faculties in the universities. It is also to create public awareness on the importance of law in a developing nation. Participating schools include the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, University of Ghana, University of Cape Coast, University of Professional Studies Accra, and the Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration, GIMPA. 
It will be in three stages, the preliminary, semi-final and grand finale. The minister in charge of tertiary education, Professor Kwesi Yanka, charged law students to stick to the ethics and principles of the profession. Take steps to curb juvenile over-enthusiasm, which is unavoidable in any institution of learning, but could also be very slippery grounds. I refer to the kind of youthful exuberance which compels some of you students to threaten legal action against universities anytime your rights appear to have been tickled by one management decision or the other. Know that as law students, you cannot afford being the first to be in breach of university regulations. A justice of the Supreme Court, Jones Doche, underscored the need to refer to the law before any agreements are made. You want to spend good money to buy land, to meet somebody, so, so I'll take you to this land. You prepare some documents for you and you go onto the land and you are driven away. Now you want to go and see a lawyer. Why wouldn't you see a lawyer before you start the entire process? People enter into such agreements without reference to the laws. The overall winner of the competition, being organized by Touch World Financial and Investment Consult, will take home a trophy, laptop, cash prize and assorted educational materials. Stay with us here on News 360. Hi there, my name is Miriam. Let's do some entertainment news tonight. Now, all traffic leads to Ada this weekend as the chiefs and people celebrate the annual Asafotufian Festival. The Onye FM Festival train will make a stopover at Ada with lots of entertainment and fun-filled activities to excite fun lovers. Celebrated by the Adans, the Asafutufiame festival, which commemorates ancient wars, draws a big crowd of people to Ada each year. It's one of Ghana's biggest culturally rich festivals, and the Media General Group is excited to be part of it. Onia FM and Onia TV stand for Yajene Woho, and we think about the people, and so we stand for the culture, we stand for the tradition, we stand for the heritage that these people have from the different parts of We have a very rich culture, and so when we tap into to these areas we want to also experience the culture and bring that kind of culture to bear for other people to also see what Ghana really has. The three-day fun trip which begins on Friday August 2 will afford revelers an unforgettable experience. The Onya FM festival train will make a stopover with loads of exciting activities for revelers. Saturday night uh, after the grand deba of chiefs and the people of the Adar traditional area uh, we're going to have the huge huge music concert with music, music live. And then on Sunday, we are going to have uh, the big cooking contest amongst women in the area as well. So these are activities happening, plus other activations that we'll be doing to engage the people in the town. The Adal Presby Park will host a special edition of Music Music on Saturday to be headlined by Yapono, Nifani and Osh headmaker Luther. So we're looking at the likes of Luther, uh, who has great gun songs. We have Waisa, we have Yapono, who's, who's that, you know, got loads of song. He has the energy to be on the stage to hold it for more than an hour. Homegrown talents will be served the platform to prove themselves. Don't miss the moment to sample and taste the rich and irresistible local cuisine of the people of Ada, the group head of events, lifestyle and entertainment at Media General Nana Kujuado, is positive the trip will leave a lasting impression on Revlin. Uh, if you're watching me, Kenyan Kwemi and find uh, find your way to Ada Presby Park. That's where the music concert is going to be at. It will be new or feel no co fine, but no feel no co nice on a music music in Banyamami. It will be a new year, but fine, new year, but no feel no co fine. The ever-dynamic indigenous band Kwampa is two years old. Winning the VGMA Traditional Artists of the Year is to the group a much-cherished career high point. The leader of the group, Asa, told TV3 Entertainment, Kwampa will work hard to invigorate traditional music. <laughs> Formed some two years ago, Palm Wine High Life Music Group, Kwampa, has become a household name. Kwampa may be relatively new, 
but their efforts in promoting indigenous music has been applauded by many. The group was adjudged the 2019 VGMA Traditional Artist of the Year. The four member traditional group owe their steady rise in the industry to constant practice and perseverance. A journey has not been easy. It started like some kind of slow, but then it picked up, and now I tell you, it has been great. Ghanaians have received us well. Kwanpa believes in the assertion that Africa has a very rich music culture, which is worth flaunting to the world. For us, we are so excited that we are able to take Ghanaian palm wine music, spearheaded by people like Jack Wenimo and the rest, and we have brought it back to the people so that even the people of today, the current people, they can embrace the kind of music we do. At the ceremony to mark their second anniversary, the group vowed not to rest on their oars, but work hard to revive traditional music and churn out songs to help music enthusiasts reconnect with their roots. And that's Kwampa for you. That's it for Entertainment News tonight. I'm Miriam Osei Ajuman. Have a good evening. Thanks very much, Miriam. My name is Sparkus Yasari. Thanks for watching. And I am Aisha Yakubu. That's more news on 3news.com. Have a good evening. Lomobites. In fear do me new chini. And that's why you're authentic. Ani yo. Eni e entry bie. Alomo alomo alomo. Alomo. Alomo ya. Mon brama yenti yemi ya. Me di aje pa koshi ya malomo. Alomo ya. Chami alomo na usi zengla. Ya kodi usi ya. Ya ya no usi ya. Ya kodi usi ya. Alomo Bites, a D20 years, the Camry Park Roger. No money answer, one Tom Manipa won in Fiat Dunwatch, and Cesar Pemfonum. FD, a future sage, the Ankara to Imagia to say, yeah. Alomo, Alomo, authentically African. Hey, girl, hold me, let's go, it's party time. No, it's raining, oh. Raining? Heavy flow. Proper sanitary pads now come in three unique varieties. Heavy flow, normal flow, and mixed flow. Proper sanitary pad in Timon Nihau. Girl, play anyhow, sit anyhow, enjoy anyhow. The new 3D bubble cotton cloth absorbs better and keeps you protected and dry. Proper sanitary pads will definitely protect you. Proper sanitary pad. I'm a my end I am the first lady of this house and there's no place for nasty coughs here. I remember when Dustin came down with a terrible cough. <coughs> I took charge. He needs stop cough. Stop cough. Stop cough will take off his throat and chest congestion. Take control of your family's health needs. Stop the cough with Stop Cough from NS Chemists Limited. And in no time, my darling was better and back to his best. Stop Cough from Ernest Chemists. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. I don't call baby, media tajabo, ginger home, and I know an echo. Who bought your say, who ban my own beam? I don't call a tadi ginger, and I dear woman, Matty. I do more. I don't call a tadi ginger, and I dear woman, Matty. Nipa, 
The End of Time is brought to you by Ideal Milk, Deluxe Paint, Lunat from Tobinko, Serilac, Milo FCB. Mom, please check on the milk. Let me see if Arjun is ready for work or not. And yes, if not for me or neither for Maya, but please, speak to her politely. For my child, mom. You are asking me to be polite.